Welcome back to another tutorial for Music Marketing TV. I'm Don Garbutt. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to organize some of your objects in what's called a stacked macro. The stacked macro is a viewing convenience. It's going to allow us to, for instance, put all our envelope generators in one macro, which only shows one at a time, and that'll conserve a lot of space on the graphic interface. For this example, I've built a simple instrument that has three envelope generators, three oscillators, a mixer, and a filter. I'm going to put the envelope generators in a stacked macro. As we look inside the instrument, you'll see that I actually put all my objects in a macro. Inside that macro, you can see the three envelope generators, the three oscillators, the mixer, and the filter. You'll see the gate object connected to the gate inputs of the three envelope generators, and the outputs of the envelope generators going to control the amplitude of three oscillators. I've also got the note pitch object connected to the pitch of the oscillators, and you can see the outputs of the oscillators going into a mixer, which feeds the blended signal into the filter and onto the output. Now what we want to do is take these envelope generators and put them in a stacked macro. So what we should do is take note of the envelope generator connections going to the amplitudes of the oscillators. Now that you've checked on that, let's take these objects and cut them, create a stacked macro, go inside the stacked macro, and paste. Now we'll need terminals on the inputs of the stacked macro, but we can go outside the macro to do that. We need the gate coming in, so basically what we should do is just drag the gate while holding down the command key to touch on the stacked macro, and that automatically creates an input terminal. You might want to label it by double-clicking and calling it G. Now let's go back inside the stacked macro. We're going to have three envelope generators that need to come out of the stacked macro, so what we can do is build three terminals and connect your envelope generator outputs to those terminals. And while we're in here, we might as well connect the gate input terminal to the gate targets on the envelope generators. All right, so that means the gate gets into the stacked macro, and the outputs of the envelope generators will go to the amplitude inputs of the three oscillators. We're almost done. A stacked macro is going to enable us to switch between the envelope generators that we want to see, and it'll only display one at a time. So the way we need to control that switching mechanism is with two objects. Let's go inside the stack macro again. The first object that we need in here is called a panel index. Oddly enough, when you first call up the panel index object, it comes up in an inactive state. So in the context menu display, under functions, select always active, and you see the light comes on. Now this object is going to do the brute force job of switching the display between the different envelope generators. But the last thing we need is a list object, and the list object will give us a graphical list by which we can control the switching of the three envelopes. So let's get a list object and connect it to the panel index. Now let's go back to the control panel graphical interface. I'm just going to move that stacked macro around a little bit here. You can see that it's calling itself the stacked macro and we have the list object sitting here. We're almost done. What we need to do is enter in the envelope generators into the list object. And that's done by being in the function display of the list object and hitting the append button three times. Now I found that the list object likes the values to be zero and onwards. So I'm just going to change these values here. And I'm going to name these three objects. Now let's try it out. As soon as I deactivated the wrench, you can see that the stacked macro size is a bit small to display the whole envelope generator. So let's make an adjustment in the size of the stacked macro object. So you just have to kind of trial and error until you get it right. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is select the different entries in the list object and just change the envelope so that we can see that the values will change as we select the different envelope generators. So that's the stacked macro. The only other thing you might want to do is take the list object outside of the stacked macro itself because the list object is taking up a lot of space. It's causing the stacked macro frame to be rather large here. So why don't we move the list object outside of the stacked macro? Instead of having it inside the stacked macro, let's put an in terminal here. So first we can cut this, build a terminal, and now we'll see the input terminal on the stacked macro. And out here we'll paste our list object and connect it to the input that is showing because of the terminal that we created inside the stack macro. There you go. With the list object outside of the stack macro, it doesn't interact with the border definition of the stack macro. You might also want to change the format of the display to spin and take the stack macro and turn its label off and maybe change the name of the list object to envelopes and adjusting the list objects width to match the stack macro size and lowering the height of the stack macro object enables us to have a nice neat look here with the stack macro and its control list above here. 
You can see this will come in really handy when you start to have a lot of envelope generators in your construction. I've also used the stack macro to hide low frequency oscillators as well, and that's definitely a space saver. So it definitely enables you to compress a lot of objects into a very little footprint on the graphic interface. In the next tutorial in this reactor series, I'm going to show you how to build a patcher so that you can connect all your sources and destinations. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.